So I counted 15 10 millimeter balls. There's uh, four e torques, four bolts, so I think they need to come off as well. open all right before going any further let's uh, just measure this chain because there is a possibility that it's stretched so I'm not sure if you can see on the camera but uh, all right I zeroed it out and so let me compress it as much as possible and I'm I'm reading 93 millimeters. If I compress it as hard as I can, probably 92.5 is what I'm getting. Yeah, I can get to So the new chain is definitely tighter. So I got a couple of parts to replace this. It's pretty worn out. So that's the part number. And this is the rubber piece. take out the old seals so looks like this is the new one for over here and this one goes here To use a bearing puller, uh, blind puller, just because it's giving me a hard time.
Now let's take apart the other half of the transfer case. I'm gonna remove this uh, rubber. So just notice how the arrows are pointing towards the transfer case. So I got the new part here. They might have up updated the serial numbers here. This one is still uh, made in Germany. So I'm not sure 100% which way it goes and if it even matters. I can see here it says NR and it says NR here. So it seems that this would be good and then the arrows would be pointing down right um, at the nuts where they bolt to the output flange. So I'm gonna be putting it this way then. 18 millimeter socket. This nut is uh, 36 millimeters. I'll try to use the puller to get the flange off. And there is uh, one seal here that I want to replace. And I also want to replace the bearing that's inside. I'm not sure how this comes out. I'll just place the 5 8 socket over top and see if this is gonna work. Putting a lot of pressure, but it's not coming out, so I'm not sure if that's the way to do it. I'm afraid there might be some kind of a circlip somewhere, so I'll just try to get this inner bearing out. I think I didn't open it enough. I repositioned the blind puller, so let's try again. All right, we got this, this bearing out finally. So we need to figure out what comes out next. The only possibility I see here is that this is stuck in the bearing, so it takes a lot of force to pull it out. So that's the only thing I can think of right now, so I'll try pressing it out again. Alright, finally it came out. I was afraid that the case was gonna shatter or crack, because I can hear the, the wood cracking. And for sure, there's something that cracked or broke. And this must have been uh, some kind of uh, ring that was holding it. And it looks like, unfortunately, I cracked the housing, so I need to get a new one. So with the circlip that was sitting in here, I'm not sure how I should have, should have been able to compress it to pull it out. If it was installed this way, I probably the only way would have been to go through here and start by probably removing the seal. Now it's easy to remove with that case cracked. So I could have pulled the seal this way. And then I'm still not sure what I could have done here. So I think the way to do it is uh, would have been to get in between here and uh, somehow spread this circle apart because the circle was sitting inside this groove. So I just reinstalled the circle back and uh, I just really don't see any way I would have been able to get it out from, from there. I would have needed to compress it somehow and there's nothing to grip it. So I think maybe there's, there's gotta be a different way. 
I think I might have needed to do it from this side and get the circlip on the bearing. It's kind of hard to get to. I think this took like probably got a little bit bent or something when I was using the press, so for that reason I can't really get it out as I think I would have normally been able to. I think now that I removed the circlip, what would have happened? With this circle of holding, I would have been able to push this out of the bearing. Unfortunately here, I can't even get this bearing out, so I'll have to get a new transfer case and uh, work from there. So I got the new transfer case, I'm just gonna start taking it apart, I guess it just cut through the rear drive shaft. This is where things went once more last time. We'll try to get this seal out. Now I can see that snap ring and if I can get it out from here then I'll be able to take this apart without breaking. Getting this circlip out is a major pain. The way I was able to do it is by lifting each side a little bit. If you just lift one side, it's not gonna come out. You gotta lift both sides and then just go around it. And I was able to finally get it off. So it was one of the hardest jobs, I guess, on this disassembly. And I don't know if I have another one, but at least this one is totally reusable. All right, now all I have to do is take all the 10 millimeters and split the case. Bolts are out, I just need to split it apart. This one must have been rebuilt. There's some uh, markings, but everything else seems fine. So. This is all the gunk um, on the um, on the magnet, and I had my old magnet somewhere. So I think in this one, the magnet is doing maybe better because the old one, I think this was from the chain rubbing on it. So maybe this chain is less stretched. So I'll take out this one. I just need to clean it up. And I already ordered a new one, but. 
I might just use this one to put everything back together faster, but this one has no air compared from my old one. So this chain might be better and less, have less stretch in it. Now with this bearing out of the way, I think I can press this out and the other bigger circlip is holding the bearing in place. So this shaft should come and press out of the bearing. So this time around, I'm hoping for a better outcome. If it doesn't come out, I will have to stop and uh, think, but I really don't see any other way for this to come out. All right, hopefully this time this sound is not the, the case breaking, but rather the shaft coming out. From what I see here, I think we got it right this time. I think it's coming out, so I just need to reposition this. And I'll just try to use my finger only to press it out. That's it, I was able to press this out. And uh, now I have access to the circle that I can take out to, to press out the bearing and press new bearing in. And it came out just like that. This bearing is, is hard to, to see there because the five and the eight look the same. It looks like it's 8050-8 and the brand is NSK. So I'll have to press it out now. Hopefully this comes out and I'm able to just use my finger. So that's a good sign that the bearing will slide out. And it did. And there is this plate. I have it from the other case. I might get a replacement and the bearing next i want to pull this bearing i already removed the circlip it was sitting just below here and um, i gotta pull this bearing so that's the bearing that's uh this is where it sits just underneath so i can see the part number is 6011 tnt9 and i don't know if there is any difference i figure that's the replacement bearing i got 6011 The difference with this bearing, it doesn't actually have a groove like this, so I'm not sure why that is. So I'm just, just gonna take off the bearing. That was super easy to remove, but there's definitely supposed to be a bearing with a groove for the circlip, so that's kind of confusing. I'm suspecting I got probably a wrong kit, so this is how it sits. So without without this groove, this will just jump out. So I have to probably get a different kit of bearings. So after lots of research, I'm not able to find the exact same bearing. A um, few differences here. There's a little groove in the middle and the same on the outer side. And the replacement bearing not only does it have a circlip space for some reason which is not needed in this application it also doesn't have the same grooves neither on the inside nor on the outside and i'm not sure if that's needed otherwise i think it should be okay it does say 6013 n which stands for the for the circlip groove and uh, c3 means tolerance is greater than normal which is fine they uh, normal and c3 they do overlap a little bit and uh, this bearing had the same specifications in terms of c3 um, the TN9 and the rest I'm not sure about, but um, I've been looking and I can't find anything better. So I can either reinstall the old one or install the new one, but the new one seems to spin way better. So the old bearing doesn't spin that great, but the new one is really spinny. So I think I'll just install this new one and hope it works out. So 
it seems to be pretty flush so hopefully that will work just fine the issue i'm having now is the 6011 bearing and uh, that's the bearing that i got i got the incorrect one the original has the groove whereas it goes on all the way and then it gets in there and then this snap ring goes in here and locks that bearing just like this so this is a 6011 so the, the first end will stand for for this groove and the problem is with the uh, with the new bearing it's also 6011 c3 but the problem is it doesn't have this groove so it's, uh, it was sold in a rebuild kit so i i figured they knew what they were doing and they were supplying the correct bearings now if i install this if i drop this in there's no way to uh to install this this circlip I got the brand new magnet. The only place I was able to find it was uh, at uh, Cobra Transmissions. I'll just drop it in here. I guess uh, just to compare it to the old ones. I think uh, definitely one of them was pretty worn out. And finally, I got the uh, 6011 uh, bearing NR C3, so it has a circlip. So, you know, this way I don't need the circlip because I'm going to be using the one that uh, was there from the factory, which was uh, this one. So I'll just remove this factory circlip. So this bearing pretty much just drops in all the way. It uh, doesn't take much to put it in. So I'm thinking of maybe just pressing it on here first so that I can push on the middle part and not um, on the outer part so that I don't damage the bearings. So in this case, I just want to press on the inner bearing. I have a feeling that there's really not that much um, pressing to do that it wouldn't even matter, but I just want to play it extra safe. I thought I was going to be able to just uh, use it with a finger, but... but I think I just wasn't using the right tools here. Oh, I guess I forgot that I got to make sure there is space here so that it's not pushing in the middle. And maybe I'll place another race like this and now I can just place something on top. All right, so here I just placed a piece of plywood. So let's see if this if this idea actually works. And it uh, doesn't take a lot of pressure. It's very light and it goes on. I feel like it's hitting the middle again. So I just need to uh, find something that will, will go around the middle. So I'll just put this sleeve it seems to be able to go just around. I think it should be enough now to finish the job. And I believe it's in all the way now. So it's in all the way and I have this other groove where the snap ring goes from the outside. I might need to just press it a little bit. And I got all the parts that I need here for the part numbers. So I um, just want to make sure if I want to install the seal first or after. I got the part number here. So this is a brand new original seal. I just got to figure out if it's easier to press it in first and then install the bearing. So I might do that. So I just used the mullet to uh, 
we have this bearing all the way in. I think it was a little bit tighter than the original. And what I forgot to do, of course, um, with this transfer case waiting, sitting here for uh, a month or more, waiting for that bearing. I forgot how to take everything apart and put it back together, even though I disassembled two of them. So this uh, snap ring was supposed to stay on there. So I can either press it out or try to uh, install it. And uh, if I can install it from this side, then I don't have to worry about pressing things out. That's it, I got, I got this circle pin, and uh, the next step, I believe, is uh, reinstalling this, uh, uh, this uh, seal. And then on top of that seal is where the protector goes, and uh, here's the, the part number, the dust cover. Here again, just find something that will uh, match the diameter, so I think I might just press it in, so that way I don't damage the rubber, and I don't have to uh, worry about anything else, so maybe I'll just press it in instead, instead of trying to tap it in. You gotta be super careful with that spring. Somehow, I didn't even do anything, but it just fell out. Uh, if you lose that spring that goes in the seal, then it's gonna be leaking, so it goes just, just around here. Somehow it popped out. So make sure that spring is in there. It definitely helps keeping all kinds of old bearings and races. I'm just using this paper towel so that pieces of the plywood don't uh, uh, don't fall in, inside the bearing. Okay, it stopped going in, so I'll have to check. All right, I'm kind of puzzled why it's not uh, going in any further. All right, I think it was just uneven. And now I got it in all the way, but I'll have to move it around. I think it's, uh, I couldn't get it even on all sides on the on the press, so I'm thinking if I can maybe try and get it in by tapping. Alright, this uh, seems to be going in perfectly. I think that's it, the new, new seal is in. It's in all the way on each side, so pretty happy with this. All right, now we can install the, the dust shield. Again, I'll just have to find something that hopefully goes just around the inner, inner flange. I guess I won't bother with the press this time, I'll just tap it. I think that's seated all the way. And uh, now there is a couple of more parts here. Number seven and number eight. Uh, the protection cap and the gasket ring. So seven goes first. All right, that's all the way in. And the gasket ring, it looks like it goes on this way. This is a magne magnetic uh, fill plug, so I didn't tighten it yet. And I think uh, this, uh, this half of the transfer case is finished. Changed both bearings, the, the rubber mount, the, the magnet, and, uh, and all this, uh, this seal, the, the dust cover plate and the protection cap and gasket ring. So that's it, I'll get to the second piece.